All right, guys. Tomorrow is the scheduled maintenance for RT, and we're doing brakes, we're doing uh, fluids, and we're doing as well uh, a few minor other things. But uh, first of all, let me show you what uh, kind of brakes I got. So we have the power stop slotted and drilled rotors. So these are the 13.6 uh, inch diameter rotors and these are vented as well. Um, you know compared to the stock I'm not sure if you can see it here. They're the same size uh, but um, we'll have more cooling with these uh, the slotted and the drilled rotors. Now, like you probably know, I, I, I usually track my car every year, so uh, that's why I need a little bit more cooling. Because I don't have this cat pack, there is no ducking, no aqua duck, uh, to get more air from the front air dam to the wheel well. And uh, uh, it could be an upgrade I'm thinking of doing maybe further on, but for now I think the first step is to get these uh, which will help cooling but will not help will, with initial bite off braking. So what I mean is that uh, in a daily use maybe perhaps there's a possibility that these don't work as good as the full, uh, full disc as we have here. And the reason is, well, you know, when you're braking, you actually need heat to uh, help you uh, stop. And the more heat you can generate, the quicker you'll stop. And having a slotted disc like this uh, is taking away surface, as well as the, the slot in that, and the, will take away surface, plus uh, it, will, it, will, it will create more airflow and it will not heat as quickly. But the advantage is that once you ask for a repetitive stop on a racetrack or a road course, um, this is when you really want those. So, you know, unless you do that, there's no really need to have these type of disc uh, on a regular daily car. And um, I'm anxious to see how they're going to fare in daily use. Uh, that's one of the things that I'm not too sure because this is a boat track uh, and a road and track car which is pretty much what it is um, I'll have to deal with it but uh, I'll let you know how it goes and uh, so I have the front here I also have the back now the back is pretty much the same idea the same it, the, the size is different though this is 20 uh, 12.8 inches diameter so they're a little bit smaller and they're also uh, rotted, uh, slotted and drilled but um, the back was a big dilemma because you know I have 60,000 kilometers on a car right now and I've changed the emission the uh, 60,000 kilometers that's 36,000 miles so 36,000 miles I've changed the first set of front rotors after 12,000 miles um, there were about 85% done. These lasted for the next uh, 24,000 miles, 40,000 kilometers, and they're absolutely, absolutely done. I mean, I'll keep them just to show you, but I think I'm below the minimal thickness allowed on these. The pads are can't wait to see how much left there is but there's there's not much but the rear the rear ones have been on my car for the for the entire time and that means you know 36,000 miles and from what I can see they're halfway just a little bit more than halfway done so I'm gonna keep those because uh, you know you can tell that the rear don't work as much they're really there just for the initial grab and then the front brakes are doing all the work so um, 
yeah we'll uh we'll keep that so i wasn't too sure if i was to buy another full set of uh of uh of a uh, full uh full full disc without any uh type of uh um drill or slotted options but uh i got a good deal on the uh power stop and you know what let's try it out see how it goes um what else have i got here now uh, one of the uh, important issues is the brake pads. You can probably have the best disc in the world, or the cheapest, as a matter of fact. And what really makes a difference are the brake pads. And these are the ones that I went with. This is a company that uh, does a performance uh, uh, carbon brakes. They are in almost every racing category uh, found. Um, they make good stuff for racing so that's why I got them I got them for my Camaro my Gen 5 Camaro I love them and um, now I'm gonna try this on the Challenger so uh, the there they are um, these are their I would say their first level of track pads Obviously, they're not the most hardcore. They're made for street cars, but street car with the tension uh, of track days. So uh, they do make a big difference uh, in terms of heat. So they will. Uh, what happens with these is that sometimes when they go, when you go to the track and you you know you spend a four or five, 20 minute session, um, the heat that will generate this will will brittle them. So if if they're not, it's not a good compound or they're not well designed, they'll brittle. And, uh, you know, at one time, my first track pad, I remember, had the stock pad uh, in, the, in my Camaro, and they just, uh, not the stock pad, the first set I bought after the Brembo pad. The Brembo were great, but after that, I bought a cheap pad, not knowing. And, you know, the, the second 20-minute session at uh, uh, Mont Tremblant, a big track, you know, just lost a break and came back and, half of the pad was missing. So uh, you gotta be careful with that if, if you plan to ever road coast your car. This is the most important aspect. You can have the cheapest rotor. Some guys do that, but the pads are really what gives away first. So the better pads will help you. And then when the rotor gets r really hot, kind of glazed, there's a little glazing effect on top of the rotor. And that, you know, when, when it's too hot, the pad and the rotor gets too hot, there's just, there's no more braking effect. It's just like some sort of water, or not water, but it, it, there's there's this friction that's no more existent because there's just that energy of heat that doesn't, you know, grab each other. So um, that happened to me also. You know, you're pushing your pedal, you know, coming from the straight, and you got nothing because your brake is so hot. You know, there's just nothing, and that's a scary feeling. And uh, yeah, it's a good thing there was some grass. So I got those. Those are the front ones. I believe they should be about the same size. That's one thing I wanted to check. Uh, yeah. Pretty much the same size. Yeah. So I wanted to have a little bit wider wider pads but our caliper doesn't allow it uh, see so this is what you'll get here so there'll be a little bit space here might not be might be better than the stock one if you check the stock one you see here the space between the end of the rotor and the end the, the end of the pad I don't know if you can see that this here but there's a hole on this one there's almost three quarters of an inch, probably five eight of the rotor space. That's not used. This one is more angled here, so it's, maybe it's because of this design. The design is different. Maybe the design is different, yeah. Maybe it's not meant to be touched anyway. So, we'll see.
How about the rears? Let's check the rears. Yeah, a 4,237 pound car. And this is the brake pad. I feel secure. Yeah. Wow. So the brake pads, yeah. Wow. I've um, I've checked the upgrade for this cat pack, the first level, the Brembo's cat pack um, from the 2015 and up, and to uh, downgrade that uh, four piston front and. Uh, um, is it two or it's four piston rear as well as set up in our car the actual caliper and um, you know disc and everything you know the disc you can find probably the same price as what we have and the pads the same but uh, what costs you is is not the caliper the caliper obviously you have to pay but you can find some you know uh, at a reasonable price but it's the actual uh, knuckle the knuckle is the attachment point in which you need uh, you need it differs from our regular RT and that expensive that's really expensive and um, and when guys with scat pack upgraded that the Hellcat brakes they already have it and it's the same setup so they don't need to change that and once you uh, when, if, if a guy with a scat pack wants to sell you brakes or you're looking into a brake upgrade uh, for any of the big brake kits you need to change that and that's like I mean, Mopar sells it at like 900 bucks a side. So that's like, you know, 1800 bucks just a knuckle, an attachment point. So that makes no sense. And if you can find a used one, well, go ahead. You know, this is the way to, the way to pick one up and change your setup to get a big brake kit. Because otherwise, you know, it's just too expensive, that thing, you know. Just a big brake kit, usually we're running about 2000 bucks. Um, starting that. And then, uh, you know, if you add that, the knuckle, um, you know, you're, you're at 3,300. So those are only the four piston calipers. And if you want to go even higher with the six point, you know, we're talking close to 5K there. So it's a big investment. We're going to start off with, you know, I like to mod my car and, and the principle of, you know, when needed, try the first step higher. So in this case, you know, need a bigger cooler effective braking under a race well let's start off with these uh, advanced pad for a track and slot it in real rotor and we'll see from there you know i mean it might just be enough to, to spend a full day at the track and uh, and be all right you know and if it does great then we'll have a setup that works and you know once you add more power more suspension component and the car goes faster goes deeper then you know we'll probably find another solution for the brakes so for now i think that's enough so brake pads cover one thing we need to cover and it's probably the most important the first thing you need to think going on a track and um, wanted to put your rt your stock rt for more than 20 minutes let's say this is it brake fluid brake fluid is the first thing you need to think of when you wanted to put your car on a road track and because the uh, standard brake fluid that comes boil as a, as a certain level of heat and a dot three or I believe you know, 200 and 189 or 200 uh, degrees and um, yeah, it's just it's just after 20 minutes, you know, the 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 fluid will get so hot that it will uh, won't generate the pressure required for it to stop. So you'll probably get a loose pedal, a long pedal, the pedals, the, st the brakes pedal is going to start to to push towards the uh, the firewall. You know, it's going to get longer travel, and that's usually what happens with low quality fuel, uh, low quality fuel. But um, when you upgrade to dot four, now there's a whole bunch of dot fours, and this is the actual base, best dot four racing fuel. This is the Castrol, 
the SRF Racing dot four, and this is the absolute best racing fluid there is, I believe. Tried a few, but this one, uh, this one, the advantage for me, uh, they're probably some better. But the thing is, is that once they've reached a boiling point, um, you know, you could, you could probably have the, the boiling point very high, but you know, once you stop the car, and this is a, a street car, so the next day, you know, it's going to be uh, there's going to be moisture, and moisture will mix with the actual brake fluid, and then will will allow the uh, the uh, the uh, the point of boiling to be lower than the initial point of boiling without being moisture added to it. So let me rephrase this, meaning that as a daily car, I'm gonna I'm not I don't want to change the brake fluid every time I go to the track. Well, most guys with serious cars and serious track car, that's what they do. But uh, you know, this is a daily car. And sometimes, a few times a year, it goes to the track at full day. So, uh, what I'm looking for is the best fluid that has the the wet boiling point. That's what they call it, the wet boiling point, meaning that it's been used and it's been sitting, and there's been humidity added to the to the component. And you know, at that level, it's that you know, that's where you want the best level. Of wet boiling point because the second day I'll go to the track and down in the last month I'll still be be able to use this a full year you know, before changing it. Now this thing will cost you about a hundred bucks for one liter. That's like um, how much is a liter? Quart? Four quart? So this, you know, that set up here, we're talking, um, how much were we really? 300, 350, 400, 500, yeah, just to probably pass five, five, six hundred bucks. Um, maybe a bit more. Maybe a little bit less, can't remember, somewhere like that. And uh, yeah, so this is, you know, the most important factor you need to consider if you want a road course uh, a few times a year, brakes, you know, it, it doesn't matter how fast you go, it matter how quick you can stop and how late you can stop. So you might have one of the slowest car, but if you can stop there at the end of the straight inside the curve, coming in the apex and just hit the brake there for a few seconds and punch out of it, you know, might be faster than any guy with the big motor and the big engine because you know they're so heavy and have to break early you know just like me next also have what do i have here I added something else oh there it is new strap this is the deco nothing really you know that was looking at some Really expensive straps, serpentine belts uh, for the engine. <sighs> yeah, that's another debate. Do I want to get into the expensive belt? Let me know. Anyway, this uh, the first one is still on, and uh, I'm looking at it. You know, 36,000 miles. This is still good. You know, I feel it's a little bit kind of whiny, but. Um, I don't want to wait until it, it pops or it breaks to change it. So this is regular maintenance, preventive maintenance. So just make sure to get a, a new one instead. Keep that one as a safety. So that's for tomorrow. We're also going to get the um, my summer wheels uh, and tires on it. Same setup as last year. I have the uh, WRT wheels from the Scat Pack option. And these are lightweight forged aluminum and uh, have the Michelin uh, Pilot Super Sport tire, the 255-40R20 setup. So uh, that's going to be great to drive on summer tires. I'm still on the winter studded tires and uh, yeah, I mean, it's time to change. So that's tomorrow's maintenance uh, schedule at the, my garages. Uh, uh, what else? 